Focus stacking is a technique used to increase the depth of field of an image. It involves taking a series of images at different focal distances, then combining them in software to create one image with a large depth of field. Okay, so I'm out here in the Superstations and I got this nice little scene set up that I want to take a picture of. Problem is, I've got this Choya, which is right up close to my camera, about that far apart. I've got these bushes, I've got these tree, these uh, trees, cactus, saguaros, and then I've got the uh, mountains in the background. I want them all sharp, I want them all in focus. There is no way setting my aperture that I can possibly get that range of depth of field. So what I have to do is I'm going to have to focus stack. So focus stacking is a two-part process. One, you're going to take images on the camera, and two, you're going to combine those images on the computer into a single image. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to walk through the process of taking the images in the field. Capturing the images in the field is the first step. And what we're going to do is capture them using a manual process. It can be done on any camera that has a manual focus system. So. The first step I always do is I like to take a picture of my hand. And the reason I do that is that way I have a picture, I know where I'm starting my focus stack. So next, we're going to look in the back of the screen, and I'm going to pick right down there. So I'm getting as close focus of the, uh, the cactus there, and I'm going to take a picture. I'm then going to probably go out a little bit on the cactus. Take another picture. We're going to move out here. Picture. We'll go out to there. Take a picture. Probably out here a ways. Take a picture. And then finally, we'll go out onto the mountains and take another shot. Finally, I finish by taking one more shot of my hand. That's the whole process of capturing the images in the field. It's really not that hard. It's just a matter of doing it. One thing to keep in mind is the closer vertically or horizontally, so if you're really your foreground subject's really close or your camera's really low, you need to take more images. The further you are away from things, the fewer images you have to take. Fujifilm cameras, at least some of them, have a feature called focus bracketing. And what this does is it basically it's like exposure bracketing. But instead of changing the exposure, it changes the focal distance between your subjects. And this is really handy because now you can basically automate that process and let the camera do the work for you, and especially when you have a tight thing. Or if maybe you're at night and it's dark and it's really hard to manually focus in on different subjects, you can just get the beginning and the end and you're good. So let's look at how the two systems work. There's two, there's auto and there's manual. So let's look at auto first. So to start out with, I'm just gonna take a picture of my hand. That gives me a starting point when I go and look at this on the computer, these images like in Lightroom or something, you got this long list of images, this gets you a point to look at. Now we're gonna go select drive, scroll down to focus bracket, and bracket, and then select focus bracket. Now we're going to hit menu. Scroll down here to the camera icon, and down over to focus bracket settings. Go to auto. Now the first thing on auto is you have interval, and this is the time between the shots that you take. So you can take one shot, wait a second, wait, and you can do this up to 10 seconds. Me, for landscape stuff, I just shoot it all very quickly. So I'm going to hit OK. Now it wants me to set my A point. And I'm going to pick this point right up here. It's my A point. 
which is my closest focus point, and I'm going to hit OK. Next, I need to hit the B point, which is going to be the furthest point I want, which is basically infinity in this scene. So I'm going to hit that, and I don't want to hit OK. I just want to hit the shutter at this moment. And now I'm going to hit the shutter. Now I'm going to go once again back to drive, switch, go back up to single, and take another picture of my hand. Once again, I know I have that bracket of shots together. So the second method for focused bracketing using the Fujifilm cameras is called manual. And what we're going to do, we're going to start out, we're going to take a picture of my hand, single image. Once again, gives me a starting point in my thing. And select drive, scroll down to bracket, select bracket, focus bracket, hit OK, then we're going to hit menu. We're going to scroll down to the camera, scroll down to focus bracket settings, and go to manual. Now there's three settings here. So the first one is frames. This is the maximum number of frames that it's going to take. If it only needs to take, if you got it set to 100 frames and it only needs to take five frames to do the focus bracket, that's all it's going to take. So normally I set this between 10 and 15. In this case, I got it at 10. The next setting is step. This is kind of a, a difficult one to understand because it's basically a factor. So the smaller the number, the shorter distance it changes between focus steps, the larger the number, the bigger distance it changes. It doesn't correspond to any actual distance or anything. It just did that. I found three works pretty good for me for landscape. Finally, interval, once again, just like in auto, you can set it to have, take a break between each shot and uh, whether you want this for the camera to make sure it's stabilized or whatever, you can do that. And then I hit OK, and I'm going to back out of these menus. Now, what I need to do, I'm going to go back to my little corner down here, I'm going to focus on a, the closest point. At this point, you've done everything you need to do because it's going to go from that closest point to infinity. This is where it's really not manual because if it was fully manual, you would be able to pick the furthest point so you could have a narrow range of focus that you want, but instead this goes over the whole thing. So now we're going to go ahead and hit the shutter. And it's done. Welcome to the office. And out in the field, we were taking, doing a focus stack images of a simple scene that I found out there. And we did it in three different manners. We did it using the uh, a manual system, which can be done on any camera, and where we just pick the focus points. We'd use the Fujifilm focus bracketing system on auto, and then we did it also using the Fujifilm focus bracketing system on manual. And we used all three of these systems to come up with focus stack images. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through them on the computer and blend them into one image. I'm going to use the, the uh, focus stacking group from the auto focus bracketing that I did. It's the same process on any of these. So we're just going to walk through and we're going to go through and look at each one of those, those uh, how to process these. Now the software I use to blend these is Helicon Focus. Helicon Focus, and I have a link to it in the description below, is a program that is just for focus stacking. That's all it does and pun intended, their focus is on focus stacking. They do. You can download the software and get a 30-day free, free trial so you can give it a try and see if you like it. By the way, I have no affiliation with them or anything. I just like the software because it works really well. And it's actually really used a lot for macro and product photography where you can get, you can end up with 50, 100 plus images to build up a uh, uh, the final image, and that's what it's used for. But it works really well for uh, for what, for our purposes here. So I've got the images opened up here in my raw photo editing software, and I'm using DxO Photo Lab to do these edits. So my first image, I have my hand here. My last image, I have my hand again, and everything in between that 
stacked images. Now I've gone and applied some basic raw edits to all of it, to the first one in, and I copied it over to all of them. So one of the most important things in the raw editing process is making sure that you synchronize the edits on all of the images so that they're all the same. You don't want to have different tonality in any of your images so that otherwise it's not going to blend together correctly when you in the uh, software. So let's take a quick look at this. If we look down here, you can see this is a real nice sharp detail on this cactus, but everything else is kind of soft. And if we go to the mountain in the background, it's really quite soft. Now, if I go to my last image here, and I look at my cactus down here, it's really soft. It's out of completely out of focus. But if I look at my mountain in the background, it's really nice and sharp. So what we want to do here is blend all these images together so we get a nice image that's sharp from foreground all the way through the background. So in this case, from the cactus all the way through to those mountains. And we're going to do that by, fo by stacking these images using so focus stacking software. So what we need to do is export all these images. So I'm going to select them all and I'm going to export them as TIFF files with the long, with no reduction in sizing, anything just as big as they can be. I'm going to go ahead and hit export and now it'll start exporting. Okay, so now all the images are exported. We're going to go and open up Helicon Focus. So this is Helicon Focus, and this is the focusing software that I use to do focus stacking. You can use Photoshop. There's a bunch of other softwares that do this. I just like this software because it works pretty well. Bring the photos in. We're going to go open up my folder with my TIFF files. I'm going to select them all and just drag them in. You're going to see them all in there. Now, when you bring the images into Helicon Focus, don't worry about the colors. They're going to look bad. They just don't render out very well in Helicon Focus. But when you save the final image, it will look just fine. Now, I typically use the method B with the default settings for radius and smoothing. You can go through the uh, help and it'll explain all the settings on there. And it works pretty well. And it's pretty nice. They go through everything pretty well. So next, we're just going to hit render. As you'll see, it's starting to create a map of all the different images of the different images in where it wants to grab focus from the sections of those images, and it's going to blend them all together. It also aligns all the images because we do have focus breathing, which means that as we change the focus, it changes. It looks like it's zooming on the lens. So now they're all done. All we got to do is hit save. And that's it. All these files have been blended together to create a single image with sharp focus from the front to the back. Helicon Focus does a really nice job of doing this. It's all the software does, so it, they just are focused purely on focus stacking. So now, if we look at it, we look down here, I've got a nice sharp cactus there. Look back here, I've got nice sharp mountains in the background. And we have a nice blended image that we can go and do some things. There can be some issues, and this is where focus stacking can be really tricky. This is actually a bad subject because of the spines on the cactus and the trees could be moving. So as you can see here, there's some little bit of uh, kind of blurry haloing on there because it, it can't figure out the exact lines of where to do the focus stack. Is this a problem? Well, it depends. If you're fo posting this to social media, Instagram, whatever, with a low resolution, it's not a big deal. I wouldn't even worry about it. If you're looking to print this large, then it can be a big problem. And then you're going to have to go in and look at doing a lot more work to get the image just the way you want it and take out all those artifacts. This probably isn't the best subject to do this with. Uh, you know, desert landscapes, sand dunes, um, rocks, seascape, seascapes. Things that tend to be static are much better. Actually, seascapes probably aren't so good because 
the C does move. Anyways, these are the things that you want to do is a static image with not a lot of movement and with nice area, easy areas to do that. I did an image of a rock in Death Valley that I focused stacked and that was the perfect type of image for it because it was a very flat mud field with a rock in it and some hills in the background. Very easy to uh, focus stack for that. So this is how I go about doing a, creating a focus stacked image. It's not that difficult. It's really not that complicated. And the reality is when you're on the field, if you think you might need to do this, go ahead and take the images. All you're doing is upsetting some electrons. So don't worry about it. You can always delete those images later. You may even come up to a point where you realize that one of those images works really well for you, where you have some, some uh, soft foreground or soft background or one or the other. And that becomes an artistic choice that you can make. But if you want it to have sharp focus all the way through, then this is a method that you can use. This is the method that you can use to do this. I use Helicon Focus. You can use other software. There's a lot of other softwares out there. I know Photoshop does this. Um, I like Helicon Focus because it's just for focus stacking, and that's what it does. They're in a they they're able to. They aren't trying to be a jack of all trades. They're focused on one thing, and that being focus stacking. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I'm trying to keep it a little bit short because it could be kind of long and boring. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please give a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you very much.